Hey everyone, welcome back. This is one of a series of short videos looking at questions in foreign economic policy. In this video, we're going to look at the use of foreign aid and official development assistance as a tool of foreign policy. In other videos, we consider topics like trade policy, investment policy, and the use of sanctions. Now, in the simplest terms, foreign aid refers to the financial, technical, or material assistance voluntarily provided by one country to another. Most developed countries provide foreign aid as part of their broader foreign policy strategies. When measured by total value, the world's largest donors include the European Union, which provides more than $75 billion in official development assistance annually, followed by the United States at about $35 billion a year, Germany at about $24 billion a year, the United Kingdom and France at about $15 billion a year each, and Japan at just over $12 billion a year. Other leading donor countries include Italy, the Netherlands, Sweden, and Norway, which together provide about $25 billion in ODA a year. U.S. aid can be divided into several categories. First, about 70% of U.S. foreign aid goes to economic development assistance, a category which includes aid that is designed to promote economic development and reduce poverty in developing countries. Examples of this might include grants provided under the Millennium Challenge Corporation to African countries making progress on economic reform and good governance, or aid provided to support education, health, and economic development in, program in countries around the world. Next, about 15% of the U.S. foreign aid budget goes to providing humanitarian assistance following crises like natural disasters or wars, examples of which might include U.S. humanitarian assistance provided through the World Food Program to support refugees in Jordan or people affected by the drought in Ethiopia. Military assistance accounts for about 10% of the U.S. foreign aid, foreign aid budget. And finally, all other spending for a variety of programs like peacekeeping operations, supporting democratization, or protecting the environment account for about 5% of all U.S. foreign aid. Foreign aid can take a variety of forms. We can, for example, distinguish between bilateral aid, which is provided directly from one country to another, and multilateral aid, which is provided through an intermediary organization like the United Nations or the World Food Program or the World Bank, and usually involves pooling resources from multiple donors for specific projects or countries. Each type of aid has advantages and disadvantages. Bilateral aid is generally more flexible, as donor countries can tailor assistance to meet the needs and priorities of the recipient. From the perspective of the donor country, bilateral aid also has the advantage of enabling them to exert influence over the recipient country, often by attaching conditions such as policy reform or political alignment. Though from the perspective of the recipient country, such influence is viewed as a negative. Bilateral aid can also be used to promote accountability, as both the donor and recipient generally have a clear understanding of the aid flow and can be held accountable for its implementation. Bilateral aid is often driven by political motivations, particularly by the donor country's political and strategic interests, which may undermine the recipient country's sovereignty and indeed may not be driven by the consideration or the needs or interests of the receiving country at all. In the worst case scenarios, bilateral aid may create or exacerbate dependency on donor countries, particularly or potentially inhab inhibiting the recipient's self-reliance and long-term development. Multilateral aid, on the other hand, combines the contributions from multiple donor countries, resulting in larger financial resources and increased effectiveness in addressing larger global challenges. And because it combines the efforts of multiple donors, multilateral aid also has the advantage of having a larger pool of expertise to draw on, allowing such programs to provide more specialized technical assistance and policy advice to recipient countries. Because it pools the resources from multiple countries, multilateral aid also reduces the risk of political interference or influence through aid programs. As a result, multilateral aid tends to be driven primarily by the needs of recipient countries rather than by geopolitical interests of individual donors. But multilateral aid is not without its problems. Because it involves coordinating the work of multiple donors, multilateral aid can be more bureaucratic than bilateral aid, sometimes leading to delays and inefficiencies in the disbursement of assistance. This problem is exacerbated when there are competing interests among donor countries, when decision-making processes among participating countries can slow down the allocation of resources in urgent situations. 
Multilateral aid can also be less flexible than bilateral aid, as the pooling of resources may limit the ability to tailor assistance to the specific needs of individual recipient countries. Finally, like bilateral aid, multilateral aid also risks creating dependency among recipient countries. Foreign aid can also be classified according to its primary purpose, though it's important to note that there can be overlap between the various categories here. At the broadest level, economic aid attempts to support the economic development and growth of recipient countries. It can take the form of grants, loans, or technical assistance, and may be used to provide for infrastructure development, poverty reduction programs, capacity building, trade promotion, or investment in key sectors like agriculture, education, healthcare, or energy. Development aid, sometimes called Official Development Assistance, or ODA, might be thought of as a specific kind of economic aid. It seeks to foster the long-term sustainable development of recipient countries by addressing systemic challenges and promoting social, economic, and political progress. ODA can involve the transfer of financial resources, capacity building programs, and policy advice, technical assistance to support areas like education, healthcare, government, uh, institutional reforms, poverty reduction, environmental sustainability, and so on. Humanitarian aid focuses on providing immediate assistance to alleviate suffering of populations affected by natural disasters, conflict, or other emergencies. It usually includes provision of food, water, shelter, medical supplies, and emergency relief services, though the provision of monetary aid in support of post-disaster recovery efforts is also critical. Humanitarian aid aims to save lives, alleviate suffering, and protect vulnerable populations. Military aid involves the provision of assistance such as weapons, military equipment, training, or advisory support to bolster the recipient country's defense capabilities. Military aid is often used to strengthen alliances, to promote regional stability, to support counterterrorism efforts, or to enhance the recipient country's capacity to respond to security threats. Finally, debt relief initiatives aim to reduce the burden of debt for heavily indebted developing countries. This assistance can take the form of forgiving or restructuring debt, extending loan payment periods, providing financial support to help country manage their debt obligations, and so on, all of which intends to redirect resources towards other development priorities. Let's look at development aid in particular in a bit more detail. Remember that to be considered development aid, or official development assistance, aid must be long-term and concessionary in nature. That is to say, it must be focused on long-term development rather than addressing short-term crises, and that any assistance provided must be concessionary in nature, meaning that loans need to be provided at a subsidized or below market rate, repayable usually over a very long period of 20 years or more, and that any aid package must include grants of at least 25% of the total assistance value. Within this, ODA can take a variety of forms. It can be tied or untied. Tied aid is given to a recipient country with the stipulation that the aid be used to purchase goods and services from the sending country. This can often limit the options and thus increase the price paid by the recipient country. Untied aid, by contrast, is given without those conditions and can be used generally at the discretion of the recipient country. Project aid is given for a specific program or project, most often as a grant that does not need to be repaid. This is often used to finance infrastructure development. Technical assistance is often included as part of project aid and usually focuses either on improving the technological base of the recipient country or on training or educating individuals in the recipient country, thereby developing a local knowledge base that can promote the goals of development. And finally, commodity aid, sometimes called in-kind aid, involves the provision of specific goods or commodities in the form of foreign aid. Rather than providing financial resources, commodity aid donates tangible products or commodities like food, medicine, agriculture, equipment, machinery, or other items to recipient countries. Food aid is a good example of a specific type of commodity aid. The U.S. foreign aid program spans a number of agencies and departments, the most important of which is the U.S. Agency for International Development, or USAID. USAID is a federal agency that provides economic, development, and humanitarian assistance to countries around the world, and it's responsible for about 70% of the total U.S. foreign aid budget. Other major agencies involved in U.S. foreign aid include the U.S. State Department, which is responsible for formulating and implementing U.S. foreign policy, and provides some foreign aid, primarily in the form of humanitarian assistance. 
The Department of Defense provides military assistance to a number of countries around the world. The Department of Treasury is responsible for managing U.S. foreign exchange reserves and providing for financial assistance to countries in need. The U.S. Department of Agriculture oversees agricultural assistance to countries around the world. And the Department of Health and Human Services provides health assistance to developing countries. Regardless of the lead agency, U.S. foreign aid serves several important policy goals. First, foreign aid is a tool for promoting national security interests. Whether by supporting U.S. allies and pro-U.S. governments or by fostering stability and addressing the underlying causes of conflict, U.S. foreign aid promotes U.S. national security interests by strengthening the capabilities of partner countries, building regional security alliances, and combating terrorism. It can be used to address the root causes of instability, such as poverty, inequality, and the lack of good governance, which can contribute to conflicts and extremism. More broadly, foreign aid can be used to support economic development to create favorable conditions for trade and investment. By assisting in infrastructure development, promoting entrepreneurship, facilitating access to markets, and sometimes even creating an appetite for U.S. produced goods, foreign aid can expand economic opportunities for U.S. businesses in recipient countries. Aid programs may also be designed to support trade liberalization, intellectual property rights, and other potential benefits for U.S. economic interests. Foreign aid is often tied to promoting democratic governance and human rights, as well as the rule of law. The U.S. may condition aid on recipient countries' adherence to democratic practices, respect for human rights, and combating corruption. Aid can support initiatives such as electoral reform, civil society development, human rights advocacy, and the strengthening of independent media, promoting the spread of democratic values and good governance. Foreign aid also enables the U.S. to address global challenges that transcend national borders. It can be used to combat infectious diseases, promote environmental sustainability, respond to humanitarian crises, support education and healthcare systems, and to address poverty and inequality. Aid can contribute to achieving the U.N.'s sustainable development goals, foster international cooperation, as well as demonstrating U.S. leadership in addressing pressing global issues. And finally, foreign aid serves as a means to strengthen diplomatic relations, build alliances, and enhance American soft power influence. By providing assistance, the United States can cultivate goodwill, strengthen partnerships, and enhance its reputation as a global leader in the humanitarian era. Aid programs often involve collaboration with international organizations, local communities, social groups, all of which can foster people-to-people connections and enhance mutual understanding. But it's worth noting that foreign aid faces a number of challenges and criticisms. First, foreign aid is often criticized for being ineffective in achieving its goals. Indeed, foreign aid has shown mixed results. In some cases, aid has contributed to economic growth, poverty reduction, improved health and education outcomes, and infrastructure development. Aid has also played a vital role in responding to humanitarian crises, saving lives, and providing essential services. However, there have also been a number of instances where aid has not achieved its intended objective or led to sustained development. And evaluating the effectiveness and impact of foreign aid can be a challenge. Determining whether aid has achieved its intended goals, measuring its impact on development outcomes, and attributing causality can be a complex task. Limited data, methodological challenges, and difficulties isolating aid's contribution from other factors makes assessing effectiveness a significant challenge. Corruption and weak governance in recipient countries sometimes pose challenges to that effectiveness. Funds intended for development projects can be misappropriated or mismanaged, undermining the aid's impact. Weak institutional capacity, a lack of transparency, inadequate accountability mechanisms, all can hinder the efficient or effective utilization of aid and erode public trust. Indeed, history is replete with examples like Ferdinand Marcos in the Philippines or Mobutu Sasaseko in Zaire, where billions of dollars worth of foreign aid served only to enrich the political elite, delivering little real benefit for the intended recipients. Long-term dependence on foreign aid can create a sense of dependency and hinder the recipient country's efforts to develop sustainable solutions. Over-reliance on aid can discourage domestic resource mobilization, impede self-reliance, and undermine local ownership of development and democratization processes. And on the other side, donor fatigue can arise when public support for aid wanes, leading to reduced funding and support. Donors often prioritize their strategic interests when allocating aid, potentially leading to selectivity in aid distribution. 
Some argue that aid can be politically motivated, favoring countries aligned with the donor's interests rather than those with the greatest need. Indeed, the primary recipients of U.S. foreign aid over the decades have been strategically important allies like Egypt and Israel rather than the countries with the greatest need. Additionally, Conditionality attached to aid, such as demands for policy reform or political realignment, can limit a recipient's country's sovereignty and hinder their ability to address the specific challenges they face effectively. Finally, foreign aid decisions can be influenced by domestic political considerations in donor countries. Public opinion and sentiment play a role in shaping aid policies, and aid allocations may fluctuate based on changing priorities or shifting political cycles. This can result in inconsistencies in aid flows and fluctuation in funding, the impact of which undermines the effectiveness and predictability of aid programs. But that's it for now. Please leave any questions you have in the comments section below, and thanks for watching. Bye.